Kenya's population has more than quadrupled since 1963, going from more than 8.1 million to more than 43 million people today. Kenya has the sixth highest population in sub-Saharan Africa. Kenya is also one of Africa's lion economies, based on high levels of economic growth on the continent. Kenya is a financial hub for the region and for Africa as a whole. But the vision is greater. The targets are higher. And this is all extremely achievable. Our vision for the central bank is a modern, world-class central bank that is operating in a strong, vibrant financial sector. So in terms of its processes, in terms of the systems, and importantly in terms of its people. For the governor and myself, our piece of the journey is to really change the central bank into a modern, outward-looking, innovative institution that will be poised and positioned to deliver to Kenya the international financial sector that we want in Vision 2030. The mandate of the Central Bank of Kenya to be a world-class modern central bank, to formulate and implement monetary policy for price stability, to foster a stable market-based financial system, and to ensure sound national payment. The financial sector also, and in particular the banking sector, needs to be brought up also and kept at world standards. So this means, for instance, in terms of uh, its ability to, to intermediate deposits, land, and also in terms of its efficiency. If we can achieve that, this will be good for the region as a whole because we intend to be um, the financial sector hub for the region. This can only be achieved with the citizens of Kenya in mind and by creating an open forum with Kenyans. We usually have the bi-monthly surveys uh, carried out by the Monetary Policy Committee and Secretariat. And uh, actually through them, because we act on their behalf as well, we get those questionnaires and we interact with the public actually through that survey. So we get the feedback and uh, we share with our head office with the same. There are usually one or two questions that stand out from the rest when it comes to the role of the central bank. How does the central bank decide how much money is circulated within the market? And how does inflation work? The central bank is really responsible for making sure that the overall price levels in the economy are stable. The audience will understand the issue of inflation, that is when prices are rising very quickly. Uh, we have uh, a target that we work with within a bad. Uh, that is set by the ministry of 5%. And we try to ensure that prices uh, are within a band of 2.5 to 7.5%. Uh, we can estimate how much is needed to achieve that without sort of injecting uh, so much to the point that inflation becomes a problem. So it's a balancing act. It's a bit like uh, the accelerator pedal. So you push it a little more when you need a bit more oomph and uh, you let go a little and maybe put a you know, touch on the brakes when you want it to slow down a little to maintain that balance. For many of us, it may appear at times that the Central Bank of Kenya is a faceless and nameless body that controls our economy. But it is within the walls of each and every department that special stories are made and told. The staff of the Central Bank are amazing and in many ways they're exceptional. Home to thousands of employees, it is vital that the Central Bank of Kenya Nairobi branch has a medical team on site 24-7. A medical team that can be called at any moment, any time of day or night. My work entails mostly patient care and um, clinic operation, which includes um, transferring of patients from uh, the branches to Nairobi for medical care. Uh, organizing uh, home visit, hospital visit, and um, in totality in charge of the nurses within uh, the headquarters and uh, the branches. For Dr. Indeche, his journey into medicine was somewhat less conventional than most. I remember I had um, just psychiatric, I had my uncle who did not 
is not responsible for my taking up medicine, but the guy used to have a practice, you know, medicine in the village. So he only knew two things, Procaine, Kipedisnil, and, and Chloroquine. So it doesn't matter whether you have had an NDG or whatever, when you want to see him injection. Yeah. And uh, the, man, the man's company, you know, he took money and everything, and chicken and goats. The compound was full of a cross section of animals and birds. Yeah, and he practiced, he had never been actually in a training school anywhere, but he was an amazing guy because he, you know, he worked as a what these guys used to call dressers. Human capital is key to the central bank, and molding the future of the central bank ranks extremely high on the agenda. For the first time in the bank, we now have an internship program. It covers six months, so we'll have youth mainly people that have finished their first degree or just finished their second degree will come in, uh, spend six months with us and uh, during that time we'll, they'll be part of the, our, our staff and that way they'll learn certain things, they'll pick up certain skills and also understand what goes on in the central bank. Being an intern in CBK has provided me an opportunity to gain experience and also to, to gain knowledge in the job market. Wow, this is a great milestone in my career and I'm sure this is a life-changing one. And uh, I'll expect a bright career after even that internship. The Central Bank of Kenya operates across the country, from the branches here in Nairobi to Kisumu and Eldoret to Mombasa. The Central Bank of Kenya Mombasa branch is home to a branch manager who has a real passion for Kenya's coast. Mombasa's significance is because of the tourism industry, uh, which is a major tourist destination for tourists from different parts of the world, many tourist hotels, and we are blessed to have the Indian Ocean there, the sunny beaches, I think the best you can have in the world. If you are out there and you've not been to Mombasa, I think it's time you booked your your ticket to Mombasa, there are nice hotels, wonderful hotels to rival any hotel in the world. Mr. Gatimu's passion evidently rubs off on his staff members. We are told Mombasa is hot, but it has a lot that it offers. Say for instance, over the, the weekends when I'm on, not on duty, I normally take uh, my young ones, we stroll to the beach, or if not a beach, we, we, we visit our friends uh, within here. One interesting thing is Mombasa is an island and uh, crossing to the south coast, we have the ferry. I enjoy crossing the ferry at least once or twice in a month. It wasn't long ago that all currency distributed throughout Kenya came from one central source here in Nairobi. That has changed through need and convenience. With currency centers in Nyeri, Meru, and Nakuru, the country is now covered, and the ease of distribution has devolved making banking and business that much easier. The most recent currency center to open its doors was here in Meru. In February 2011, showing just how much Kenya's economy as a whole has grown, the Meru Currency Center serves financial institutions in Embu, Chuka, Maua, Meru, Nyanyuki, Isiolo, Marsabit, and even Garissa. This is, of course, Kenya's central bank, a place that takes in and releases quite a large amount of cash on a daily basis. They call me the cashier number one, but uh, actually my official title is the head terror. Cashier number one is a older version where we used to do a lot of manual transactions and all that. And at that time, the vault for banking division could only have been held by one cashier. The money I've handled, I would uh, find it hard to give it a value because for sure it is a lot. It is in millions, billions, or even trillions. This is because I've been in cash section for over 18 years. Surely it cannot, it cannot be any less. So who was responsible for making sure the figures match and ensuring the money is distributed to the right places? Meet the team from the Currency Operations and Branch Administration Departments, or COBA. It is a unit of uh, about 27 ladies who have uh, been entrusted with the activity of uh, counting, sorting, and also confirming commercial bank deposits. I'm the one in charge of uh, note uh, examination, 
Nyeri Currency Center, uh, where we do the currency processing, where we sort uh, the clean and soiled money, so that uh, we safeguard the integrity of the institution. The Central Bank of Kenya is not an institution filled with economists. Each and every department within the Central Bank has different needs. Security plays a key role in the bank's operations. We have uh, people who, who do all kinds of things. Uh, for example, in, in Eldoret, we have a, a lady who's a platoon commander. And she tells me that she can shoot bazookas and things like that. I joined the bank in 1991, and I'm a trained uh, army officer. We protect the bank assets and the staff, and uh, we deter any kind of terrorists whenever we see within the vicinity of the bank. So majorly what we do here is just to protect the bank and the assets. And while each and every member of the central bank staff is special, there are some truly exceptional stories. Individuals who have used their posts at the CBK to better the lives of so many more. Individuals like Rose Jero. My role in uh, waterfalls, it, it just uh, it, it began in a simple, funny way. When a uh, certain lady called Helida invited me to her school, by then it was Ambrose of Papa at the slums of Tasia. And um, the journey started like that. The central Bank is a good family. We are one, actually. And uh, that's something which has taught me to really be also a giver. I remember this one time, there, there were rings and there were flans in the school. And the classes could not, I mean, were not accessible. And uh, I went to our, our charity fund. They gave us a check. Actually, that was the beginning of our success because we were able to put up a big class in, my comp in our compound. And uh, all the children were in that one class and all the different teachers. Yeah, it would not have been possible without CBK. For Maureen Were, research has assisted her in writing a life-changing book. I was inspired to write this book because of the unique experience I went through with this little girl. And I don't know what people call miracles if this cannot be a miracle. It has been a long journey. We've been in and out of hospital. And what inspired me to write this book is basically to share my story and just to let the world know that there is no problem that is insurmountable. As I've indicated in the book, even if I was to be told this story before, if before Leslie was born, I think it wouldn't have changed my decision. And taking care of others takes on a whole other meaning for pension officer Caroline Murugo. I joined Rotary, maybe because of my background in NGO. One of the projects that we do at my club is we will be launching a project called West Yoma Water Project. It's a project to bring water to a community of about 36,000 or so people in that community. It's building water tanks as well as repairing the pipes that were initially installed by the water company way back in the 1970s. We're to get water from Lake Victoria. The village is not very far from Lake Victoria. So it's a whole piping works. The having a treatment tank where the water is treated before it's transferred to the water tanks and then sold in water kiosks by the members of the community as a way of sustainability. They get the money to continue um, serving themselves in this particular place. For Daniel Amanja from the CBK's research department, it is simply about giving back. I started a lot of things in the village to just uh, assist the guys down there. I'm in so many social groups in, the, in my community and more so relating to education. Currently, I pay school fees to about uh, five students in a neighboring day secondary school uh, just to stimulate competition within the school. So I always say whoever becomes number one in their class this time I'll pay school fees for the following. And I've been doing this for the last, I think, six, seven years. We all remember the Charterhouse and Goldenberg scandals. Two events that arguably changed Kenya's course and that have hit extremely close to home for three central bank staff members. 
I happened to be a witness for all the institu for the institutions which were related to Golden Bag, and it was quite a challenging aspect because I had to reconcile all the accounts related to Golden Bag, and then I had to go and present my evidence before the Golden Golden Bag Commission of Inquiry. I've been involved in quite a few cases, but I think the one that stands out that I would like to share today is a charter house. I remember at some point. I was given arm security and I didn't know even how to handle arm security. <laughs> so I'd find myself just walking the streets, I'd meet with them and they're like, what are you doing in the streets alone? You're supposed to be accompanied by security, especially around that time we were going to give evidence because that time it was really quite scary. There were also, there were also a lot of threats we came across. The first day when the team went there, uh, this is part of our takeover procedures. There are certain documentations, certain, uh, certain information that you are supposed to be given. For the first time, I was learning what we call, what people call data mining. So it's like going into a mining expedition. One time, I had a very nasty experience whereby I found somebody waiting for me at the car park, and when I entered the car, they tried to open. Lucky enough, I'd locked it, but they didn't get through. So. Uh, he was, he just saw a security guard came to my rescue. We walked through the morning, through the night, and through the next day. You have to be strong. You have to, to know that what you're doing is risky, yeah? But you have to have that courage to go ahead and do it. There are also one or two members of the older generation that remain part of the beating heart of Kenya's central bank. When I came, I asked one of the people I left here, uh, how is the office? Uh, are you making sure that the governor is really uh, comfortable? And they told me, yes, Charlo, we really make that place comfortable for our governor. The way he has made also the bank comfortable for us. So I said, wow, this is a change, and this is very good, because these are the people I trained how to make the place clean, how to, you know, to move around. So these people, Lily, they are putting more efforts, not because the governor has told them, but they really feel they are challenged, they want to give the best to the governor because the governor has given them the best. After retire, I'm planning to relax a bit. Around the end of the year, I want to visit my children in Australia because, you see, the bigger part of my family is in Australia. So to go there with my wife, who is also retiring. We have tried to psychologize our retire together so that we can start other things together. From Stan Salas Karaoke, the journey has been long. Over the years, Stan Salas has seen quite a bit of change at the Central Bank of Kenya. When I was employed, there was no computer in the bank at that time. Even after going through my document, you can see that the they have written by someone with a pen, <laughs> but now everything is computerized, including our document. But life here at the Central Bank of Kenya is not just about banking. The CBK at 50 celebrations have been anchored on the youth and the recognition of the key role they play in Kenya's growth and its development. 2016 marks the 90th edition of the Kenya Music Festival. The festival attracts learners from early childhood development, primary and secondary schools, middle level and vocational colleges, as well as university students. The Kenya Music Festival helps gifted students develop and showcase their talents on a national platform from north to east to south to west and everywhere in between. CBK, my beloved, my sweetheart, the heartbeat of our economy. It is evident that music plays an integral role within the Central Bank of Kenya. Whether it is someone's last day on the job, or perhaps more organized musical collaboration like that of the renowned CBK Choir. There is camaraderie here, a need to do things by improving lives. We have an active running team. Uh, we do at least, uh, I'll put it at about 25 kilometers every week. We meet here, um, transport is provided from the bank, and uh, if you, are, you can do a 
10K, you can do 15K. You go at your pace, there are coaches around you, and there are people who never ran in their life. And they, they come, or they've come. Now they probably are doing a little more than just one kilometer. I'm an extremely poor runner. I start, I finish last, but I, I don't give up. I did the half marathon, the first lady's half marathon. I did 21K. Um, it took me two and a half hours. Um, I think it was uh, respectable. Um, and I'm trying to prepare now for Dakaine, um, which is uphill. Um, I know it would be horrible. I know it would be very difficult and I shall enjoy it thoroughly. I've been able to participate in First Lady Marathon, the Stanchat Bank Marathon, and uh, I've, in the Indabang, I've participated in 800 meters, and my personal best is one, one minute and 50 seconds. Within the bank, I'm known as the best sports athlete, and this has made me to enjoy and feel actually I'm a champion within the bank. So thank you so much. <laughs> As the Central Bank of Kenya team recently took part in the Kenya Interbank Games, may not have emerged as champions, but they certainly put up a good showing. No obstacle too great, no goal unachievable. These are ideologies that members of Kenya's Central Bank live by. Our life is not just about you know, just monetary policy and things like that. We are human beings, and we need to engage with each other in this way. The Central Bank of Kenya is about people, but not just ordinary people, individuals and human capital. Each and every member different, special and unique in their own way. We will guide, we will be policy makers, we will encourage, we will have to, to, to protect but really it's the staff of the central bank who will, who will execute the journey. And I think this thing of communications and letting um, the market and uh, you know, the Kenyan understand who the central bank is will actually position our staff to get that respect and recognition that they deserve.